Hello everybody, the Utopian Duelist here, and today I have Malcolm's Raid Raptor deck profile. Alright, what's up guys? Uh, if you want to see more of this stuff, go to uh, Team Dark Duelist channel, but let's go ahead and get started with the deck. Most people don't agree with everything that I do in here, but for me this works really well. It definitely gives them a more competitive edge. So to start off, three Vanishing Lamias. Uh, this card starts off most of your combos, and it just gets the deck flowing pretty well. After that, I play three Mimicry Lamias. Uh, this card, you know, I use it to actually go into Blaze Falcon most of the time, but I do use it for its search ability. If I do draw into a Tribute or a Foolish. Uh, next, I play three Last Tricks. I know there's a lot of people who, like, think, you know, this card, you know, I don't really use Ultimate Falcon that often, but when I draw this, you know, it at least gives me hand advantage and life points if I need it. Next, I go into two Tributes. Uh, tribute, it, for me, feels like perfect at two, just because you can send one, or send a Redraptor card from your deck to a graveyard. Since Mimicry's the only thing I'd actually send, since I don't use Fuzzy, it nets me, you know, my nest or whatever I currently need by vanishing the Mimicry. Next, I play two Sharp Lamias. Uh, this card here kind of combos on its own. You have pretty much rebuild your combos during main phase two. But, uh, like, if you're, say, going against Monarchs and I don't have uh, March of the Monarchs out, you actually play this, activates effect to switch the Monarch into the fence mode and just run it over to get you out of that domain lock. Next, we play two Booster Shrieks. Just because it's a good hand trap, I mean, banishing it and non targeting destruction. So it gets you a lot of good moves going off. Then I play one Singing Lanius and one Pain Lanius. Uh, singing, most people know Pain. You just give up a few life points, splash summoning. You, the only restriction you're really into is a, you can only AC summon into Wing Beast with him. But I mean, that's really not that much of a restriction. Going into the spells, uh, I do play the rank up variant of this deck. So, three skip force. Uh, now, comboing this with last tricks, you can really access any Raid Raptor XC that you have that goes up by two. Like, you can use this if you say you don't need to go into a four tricks at the time. You can actually use this up and go into Revolution Falcon to help, you know, clear off, clear good board. Or, you know, Silent Cannon Pop Back Row or Ultimate Falcon. You know, you have a lot of options for just that one card. Two Soul Shape. Uh, Pretty much just target your dead Raid Raptor exceeds and make him two ranks higher. You know, half your life points really isn't that much to pay in this deck in order to go into his big pushes. I do play one Astral Force and one Revolution Force to round up, or round up my rank ups. And that's just because Revolution Force is a good rank up. If you're only against an hour rank four deck, you know, that's instant Blaze Falcon. If you're only against the Burning Abyss, the second they do that from that Dante, just make this. So you can make pretty good boards with it. Next, I play two Allure Darkness. A uh, good draw card, you know, help get you that hand advantage and get you into your Raid Raptor monsters a little quicker. I play one Upstart Goblin. Again, just in there drawing just one Cattle Call. Uh, this pretty much just makes like a fourth last tricks in your deck. Uh, one one for one to so help get the last tricks on the field quick. One Foolish Burial. Get Mimicry in the graveyard so you can get a good search. One Twin Twisters. You know, uh, you can ditch a Mimicry or whatever you currently don't need at the time and pop two cards on your opponent's field. Get, the, get you out of that domain lock. And one Raptor, Raptor, Raptor Nest. Good for it. pretty much infinite search of your deck. And you won't ever really run out of resources. Now we'll go on to Spells and Traps. I play three Raptor's Gust. Uh, this card really comes in real clutch for most duels, because whenever people need a spell or trap like they need, like you're only against Monarchs earlier, and my opponent went to activate Tenacity because he really needed to add a uh, store for it to hand, I activated that to stop the Tenacity, and that's pretty much game on that one. I do play three trap hole cards, which go in order of bottomless, time space, and trap trick trap hole knife. Just these three together, you know, com combo with my reflection will typically net me a big advantage on the board. I play one song morning just to keep my punch from going to a big place. I want skill drain. Uh, this kind of combos with either Reflation or Ultimate Falcon because both of them can still access their effects 
while under a skill drain lock. Moving on to the extra deck. Or, yeah. And we start off with two ultimate falcon. Uh, pretty much one of your boss monsters you play in this build. Uh, the detach you don't really use that often, but you detach one material, everything loses a thousand simultaneously and they can't activate effects for the rest of the turn. The effect that will typically be used is while well, it has one overlay, which is if your opponent controls a face up monster, it loses a thousand or they can all lose a thousand attack. If they control nothing or have a face down defense, they take a thousand damage. Two satellite cannon. Uh, really amazing card. Like this card is actually pretty much underrated in Raid Raptors. Uh, once special something or once XE summon, you just pop the whole back row, you know, no response to it kind of thing. And say it has two or three materials and your opponent has two or three monsters, you can actually detach each of these materials and chain to itself and hit all those monsters down to zero attacks, pretty much. Two four strikes. I know most people play this at three. I play it two because I feel that's just like the perfect balance. And it gets you, this card sit here will still get you a pretty good uh, amount of your resources. I mean, one Revolution Falcon, uh, just because Revolution's still amazing. Again, I honestly believe this is an error on the underrated XEs. Because, I mean, if, if, if your opponent controls a special summon monster and they swing into this, its effect triggers and knocks our monster to zero. So they take 2k damage. One Blaze Falcon. Uh, again, a really clutch card. I really don't see why more regard players aren't playing it. Because it can clear boards easily enough and do a lot of damage. And in fact, this is probably like your game winner right there. Next, we go into the non raid Raptors, which is one number 39 Utopia. And it's of course, it's a partner in crime. 1S39 Utopia the Lightning. Yay. This, you know, will get around big trouble monsters. It gets around Dark Planet. It gets around a Dark Destroyer if you don't have your ultimate Falcon out. It just gets around a lot of stuff. Best two cards in the deck, guys. Best two cards in the deck. Yeah. Next, we go into number 82 Heartland Draco. Thank you, Utopian Bills, for this one. I Yay. just traded him today. Uh, due to the fact that you do play Raid Raptor Nest, this thing will just stay on the field and you know, can't be targeted for attack, so it's like you just have a wall protecting you there until they get rid of your nest. Uh, we play one Trap Tricks Replacia. Again, they go with the three tra trap holes in the deck. It can pretty much just keep your run from going to big plays. Uh, one Digesto Emerald helps to recycle the Force Tricks. And you know, you get to end that an extra draw. One Castell, Sky Blaster Musketeer. Uh, if you're playing something on the field that you don't like, unless it's Cosmo, uh, you can just bounce back into the deck and you're pretty much set. And the last card I play in the extra deck is Cyber Dragon Infinity. Probably your number one soul shape target, other than uh, Revolution Falcon. And that's just because you get this out and your opponent really has nothing they can do against it. I use this against Cosmos all the time, and when they get the tag out for a ship like with... Uh, Either whenever a Cosmo ship is destroyed or, you know, using the small ones to banish themselves. I'll usually chain that to it just to keep them from being able to do it. But yeah, that's the deck profile, guys. And uh, if you want after this, go to the Team Dark Tools YouTube channel and give me a sub. Or don't give him a sub. Yay. Or yeah, totally give me a sub. <laughs> yeah, guys, give him a sub. Um, that was Malcolm's Raider deck profile. He's awesome. Um... Cosmos today with it. Um, still better duelist, but but we'll see about that. <laughs> Call in everybody. Repression. Wow, and you know I can't edit anyway, guys. Thanks for watching. Like and uh, like and subscribe. You got ah, you know the rest. <laughs> see ya. Go